James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's James' attitude throughout this whole epistle. I'm just a servant. <laughs> we can develop that will be akin to the character of the Lord Jesus, because we remember that's what he said he came to do, just to serve, just to be a, a slave. But James said, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and writing to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, and greeting my brethren. Now, that's more than the 12 tribes, isn't it? So originally, those that God called to himself out of the 12 tribes, but Oh, wow, grace just began to weave a web around the world and draw all of us to the Lord. And uh, Christ died for whosoever will, grateful for that. But my brethren, that takes you in, takes me in, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Father, challenge us for a moment with thy word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a servant of God. Are you one? James confessed that he was. <laughs> and we have the privilege of being that tonight. Do you know what? We can find out because he gives us some qualifiers here that let us know. Verse number two, he talked about my brethren who have temptations. Could any of you qualify as uh, being a brother on that account? <laughs> Having temptations. Temptations define who we are. Not just as needy creatures or perhaps fallen creatures who need restoration by the triumph of grace, but that we have become the servants of God, that we can identify with what James called himself a servant of God. And he said that it is those temptations who help define who we are. If you were not the servant of God, you wouldn't need to be tempted, would you? You just make your own choices and do your own thing and go your own foolish way. But it's because we find ourselves at time in the throes of temptation that it defines that we have been changed, that we belong to someone else and the devil's mad and he wants us back. He doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't want you to walk with the Lord. Well, I like this thought that a person who is now the servant of God and finds themselves um, in the throw of temptation doesn't respond to the call of the sin, but is under the command of joy. I love the definition of this, this verse, when ye fall into, and uh, somebody translated it this way, when you're under the command of joy, then you overcome temptation. I am grateful for that tonight. Now, we're in a very uh, interesting age, and there are temptations, and uh, this word doesn't always mean to do something wicked and sinful. It is a word that sometimes is applied just to tests and demonstrations of uh, perhaps the metal uh, in a piece of metal. Maybe um, whether you're qualified or fit to perform some function or duty. It's the blanket word for testing. And uh, he said that when we are find ourselves, we can be under the command of joy. Now, we've been talking about that in these days of, of quarantine, of the importance of praising the Lord and putting spiritual things first and claiming the promises of God. But here it comes to us again. What is going to be your victory in the time when you're being pressed? And I tell you, he said, live under the command of joy. Oh, I am thankful for that, that we can praise him and we can bless his name and we can have a smile on our face, even when the product you went to pull off the shelf is gone. I made it, you know, one of those woe-begone trips to Walmart today. 
And three or four things that I was looking for, they were already out of. Maybe that's happened to you. But uh, it can be a distressing time. But you know what? I didn't kick the shelf. I didn't throw a fit in the aisle or shove my buggy away. Uh, but I just was able to be pleasant and kind. And it wasn't because that's who I was, because there was a day when I might have given Walmart down the road right there in front of whoever was listening. But you can learn to count it all joy, even in the midst of your distressing situation. Amen? Cheyenne, when you think you wish Michael would just go to work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's agreeing with me, Michael. Uh, <laughs> see, I've got Michael in here with me tonight. I can protect him. <laughs> but uh, we understand when you're in the throes of it, we don't live under the command of the enemy or under the test that he brings our way, but uh, we yield ourselves to our commander, Christ Jesus. His we are. So temptations help to find who we are. Secondly, um, verse three talks about then trials, the trying of your faith. They develop what we are. Why has God allowed the saints to go through this as well as people who aren't living for eternity? Because it is these kind of constraints and difficulties and trying circumstances that develop your persistence, your endurance. Hmm. We're familiar with the story of Job. and You've read it many times, heard it preached about, but uh, it bears repeating tonight. Remember the devil said, Job is only serving you because things are going well, because he's wealthy, he's healthy, he's got a beautiful family, got resources, and no wonder he's serving the Lord. But you just put him under some constraints and he's going to curse you to your face. <laughs> and God allowed it to happen because he knew his servant Job would be able to persevere and demonstrate that he wasn't just serving God, as Jesus said to one crowd for loaves and fishes. He was serving God by choice and on purpose because he knew he was his redeemer. He knew he belonged to him in a special relationship. And I tell you, God has allowed this time to come even to the faithful and the constraints that we're working with, with internets that don't work, and, and computers that attach and, and uh, unattach, and oh, wow, just all of the things that we're going through. But can I tell you, they develop you, and they make you stronger, until when the devil is saying, curse God, or he's saying, just let go, or you don't really need to tune in tonight, or, or you can do something else, you could be doing 101 other things, it tests you whether or not you're going to persevere and push through. It builds spiritual muscle for you. And then thirdly tonight, out of verse number four, he talks about time. Let's look at it, but let patience have her perfect work because it isn't something that happens in just a moment. It's something that happens through a process of time. Ye may be complete or perfect and entire, wanting nothing or lacking nothing. It is time that, de that details whose then we are. Not just who we are, I'm a servant, I'm a transformed son of Adam, um, I'm, a, I'm saved by grace, and I'm walking under the direction and leadership of the Holy Spirit, I'm developing spiritual muscle through the trials that have come my way, but God wants me to look like Jesus. Would you like to look like Jesus? Would you like people in your neighborhood to see Jesus? Would you like the shoppers in Walmart to see Jesus in you? Well, James said, then you have to go through trials, temptations, and let time take its work as God continues to chisel you and develop in you and creating you the image of Jesus Christ. Why this distressing time? Oh, we've had a thousand reasons, haven't we? <laughs> and every time you turn on the radio, you get a new one. But can I tell you, dear heart, God wants to use these difficult times <laughs> to complete you. 
and so that you don't have them. You know, some people can live well for Jesus when everything's going all right. And they can shout and shine when they're feeling good and got good health and the bills are paid and everything's going well. They can make Jesus look pretty good. But how do I make him look when the chips are down, when I don't have things, uh, you know, aren't as we would have them? And it's just in these kind of times that God is working on you to let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you and give Jesus to the world. Oh, may God develop that in you and detail you, go over you with his fine file and, and all the little things that uh, the sculptors use to bring an image out of a piece of rock. That's what God is doing with you. Using coronavirus, using the quarantine, using all of these various distressing times and things, but to make Jesus be seen in you. And may it come to pass, I pray in Christ's name.